most auction rooms, there are loads of paintings for sale. Some range from £20 by unknown artists right up to millions of pounds by masters of the medium. While we were here filming in the area, I decided to try my hand at the art of watercolour and have a lesson with a master. See if you think I've got what it takes. This is Townley Hall near Burnley. For over 500 years, it was home to the Townley family. But for the last century, it's been owned by the local authorities who now use it as a museum and art gallery. I'm here to meet local artist, Jeff Butterworth, whose talent with watercolors has made him one of the country's most prolific painters. Hello, Jeff. Hi, Paul. Good to see you. Good to see you. Well, the weather's on our side, isn't yeah. it? Shall we get going? Yeah, follow me. been painting all your life? More or less, yeah. I did start when I, um, in 1980 mm -hmm. and I joined the British Watercolour Society mm -hmm. and uh, the first exhibition I did, I won the competition. That's quite an accolade, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and then... You won it again? To top it all, I won it three <laughs> times, yeah, I won it actually three that times. That's quite so. an impressive CV. You are a well-established watercolour artist. That's, you, that's you've exhibited right. all over the place. How would you describe your style? as a realist. Okay, um, so it's, try... it's photographic representation. It is, yeah, yeah. 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 Why are we meeting up here today? What's special about this place? Well, I've been coming here since, well, the first time I came here, I was five. Really? Lots and, of childhood memories? Yeah, and now um, I'm artist in residence at Townley Hall. Gosh, that's nice, isn't it? It's come full circle it for has, you. It yeah. It's been quite a good time, really. I mean, that's a beautiful looking shot there, isn't it? it is, that something yeah. that we hope to capture today. Well, if I take a photograph around. of the view now, it's got a good composition. The path's leading you right towards the hall. Well, I'm up for going inside. Yeah, so let's... So you've got uh, your camera with you. We'll take a photograph of it, go and then, then we can work off, off the uh, results. There we go. Happy with that one? Yeah. The art of watercolour evolved around the 18th century when artists would use watercolours to create an initial snapshot before committing to an oil painting, much like Jeff uses his camera to capture the landscape today. Right, where do we start? We've got our image, we've printed um, it out. Yeah, we've got our image. So now we've got to do an outline drawing of the buildings and the path and the trees. All right. So that's the first step. Okay. Can I do my own interpretation of this or am I copying your style? No, you uh, interpret it how you think fit. Watercolour paintings are still hugely popular and the collection here at Townley includes work by some of the best known practitioners of the art, including this one by the world renowned Joseph Turner. I think I've got something that I can work with now. I'm quite happy with that. Good. So, um, should we start to paint? Yeah. What do you start with? The sky and work downwards or um, dark to light? I or always work to from top to bottom. Right. But more importantly, from background to foreground. Okay. So if there's anything that's lighter than the, the dark background, we we'll use a masking fluid. Right, okay. So you paint over it with the other colours but then rub that paint off so it leaves the blank paper to paint on. That's it, yeah. You've got a wonderful assortment of brushes here, sort of flat brushes, fine brushes, and mixing brushes. Yeah, that one's for you. I've got a nice selection here of uh, some sable brushes. OK, that's the best pair to use, is it? Yeah, it is. It's a very expensive brush, but uh, a very good quality. Well, we need to choose some colours. Right. So, are we going for blues with some whites that we have to mix um, in order to get that? In watercolour, there is no white. It's the paper. So, if there's any areas that are pure white, then it's areas that we're not going to touch. Do you know, I didn't know that. Can I watch you for a little while? Yeah. If I see what you tackle to start with and how you do it, and I'll try and copy. Yeah. Okay. I'll start with the sky. Right. And uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. Right. Um, what we want to do, first of all, is to wet the paper, ready to accept a colour on it. So it's harder to paint detail on dry paper, then? Yeah. Well, I've learned um, something there. I'm going to carefully work round the building. Notice there's not much colour on it at the moment. Now I'm going to put some of the masking fluid because on. Because you've come to a tree? Yeah. OK. Yeah. The, oh, I uh, see, yes, pitch. as if the sky is sort of gritting through the branches. Yeah. Well, while you finish off that, I can at least make a start on the sky now. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is about done now, so we'll leave this to dry. It's a lovely brush to work with. 
flat brushes are, are really nice. They cover the paper. For a broad area, yeah. don't they? Right. Are you going to do some masking fluid? Yeah, can I? I've never used that before. Yeah, I'll show you how to do it. Just a quick dip in. And then a few dabs. Yeah, and paint on where it's dried or go onto, onto the watercolour. It's a gentle process. What's the most difficult thing to paint? Architecture, really. Do you think so? Yeah, yeah you, you've not much scope, really, to, to be loose with architecture if you're trying to get the thing right. Mm. OK. What's next? We'll work our way across, do the background trees, and then work on the building, work on this section. I'm finding it really relaxing, but it's something you can't rush. No. I understand that now from yeah. watching you. Yeah. Although you're working at a, a, a quite a good pace. Have you a critical eye at this stage? Well, I'm working out the technicalities of it, building the thing up. Because all of a sudden, I'm sort of working with three different shades of green here and, and yeah. making them merge and seeing what happens and just letting the well, that's good, paper yeah. and the water yeah. dictate what's happening. The thing that makes watercolours more difficult than oils or acrylics is the paint is much more liquid and it wants to move. With thicker materials, it stays where you put it. But with this kind of painting, you have to learn to work with the materials and adapt your technique accordingly. A good tip for doing foliage is to, to get a, an old brush, something like this, Paul. Mm -hmm. Get a little bit of colour on it and then just mm -hmm. do that. It'll make things oh, like yes, that. Oh, yes, I see, yeah. You need yeah. to do it on a dry background. Sure. So you can build it up like that. That's a nice look, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm kind of happy with that in my own way. Yeah, it looks... Shall we move on to the buildings? Uh, yeah, I've already started with the roof. At the top yeah. is Payne's Grey, which we've already used a little bit on the trees. OK. So basically it's the same as we've done already. We start at the top of the building and work right. down. OK. You've painted all over the country, Jeff. Landscapes everywhere, in different lights and in different conditions. It must change dramatically for you. Yeah, I find that there are differences in the light. Southern England has, sure. has a, perhaps a, a mellower feel to the landscape and the light. The further north you go, the more harsh the, mm. the colours can be, but mm. basically you still work with the same palette. Should I carry on with this building here? Or do I do the tree first? Um, Which comes first? Finish off each section before you move. Okay. What, even the window detail? Yeah, do it all. Oh, right, okay. Bear in mind that it's not all red, there is, there is some green. I know, and there's there. a bit of brown, isn't yeah, there? It's quite tricky, really. I can see why you work from a colour photograph now. Yeah, although I have done uh, quite a few black and white ones this year. A few hours in, and I'm finding this really relaxing. It takes a lot of concentration, but when you're in the flow, it's really easy to let your mind wander as the picture comes together. Although I think I need a lot more practice before I reach Jeff's standards. Well, Jeff, three hours is up. Yeah, yeah. I've well, rushed done. ahead. I know yeah. I finished mine. I'm happy with it, but when I look at mine compared to yours, this looks well. I've this looks typical of a schoolboy <laughs> compared to a professional. But I've yeah. learned a lot today in my three hours. And I've learned that there's a lot of control in your work. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Thank you so much for giving me a lesson here today. Shall I sign this? Certainly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who knows, maybe at the gallery, hang it on the wall for a week. Put a price on it, yeah. Put a price on sign. it. I'll sign it with watercolour, shall I, rather yeah. than pencil? Yeah. There you are. I enjoyed that. Thoroughly Lovely. enjoyed that. Excellent. Now this is Jeff's finished piece. It's easy to see why his work is held in such high regard.